Hello everybody, welcome back to Bison Workshop, I'm Bob, and this video is part three of the air compressor build, and I've added a few things to it, but before we get started, the most important thing we have to discuss is, don't forget to have your truck coffee. So, I spent the whole day working on making this plate to mount the motor on. And yesterday evening, or last night, in the middle of the night, I worked on making this plate to mount this dryer and oil boiler. So, I did a few changes. Uh, instead of uh, running the line from where I was going to run it to go to the hose that goes out of the shop, or comes into the shop, I decided to just run copper line with compression fittings and a quarter inch fit pipe fit. So we got the copper line and then I'll make a piece to go across here to hold that against it. Probably 3D print something to put there just to hold that so it looks nice and pretty. And um, I'm, I'm working on the base for the uh, mount for my axle. Uh, these here are the bearings that I think I'm going to go ahead and use for that job. Which means I'll have to put them in like that. And they do have set screws to hook to the shaft. So all i got to do is just make the shaft and put this on there and then put the set screw in it. It's two of them. They're missing, however, but I can find those. So anyway, I got to the motor mount and I wanted to show the mount how I decided to make it. Alright, so what I've got here is two bolts with a nut. I flattened one side of that because I was actually going to weld those to it, but I decided that that's not going to work. <laughs> so I wouldn't be able to spin it. So anyway, I've got some hex stock here that I drilled and tapped on the end of it for 3 8 So that will thread in there. Then I made a bolt to go up in it with the shank the thread's taken off of it so that when this thread's in, it acts as a set screw also. So, that'll go in, and that will hold this bolt in place. So, then, we do the other one the same way. Actually, I think I'm going to change this nut. The one that don't have a flat side on it because now I don't need that flat side. <clears throat> All right, so we'll go ahead and thread that in to that, thread that into that, snug it down a little bit. Snug it down a little bit. Alright, so now we've got our two. This one I gotta change. I gotta change the nut. I want them to at least match. You gotta have matching bolts, right? But I noticed something about that pump. It doesn't have an oil drain on it. So how the hell do you drain the oil in it? They've got their oil drain plugged off. It's just a blank. So now we can put this together. And I think this will work just fine. But I'm missing a step here. Uh, 
Okay, so I need to put this in before I put that in. If I can stop dropping stuff. Sorry guys. Alright, so we got that one. I gotta take this one back apart. I forgot to put the rail in. Now I may have to weld a little piece of metal on the inside of that. I'll show you what I mean. Right, so we'll tighten that up. And then we'll tighten this one up. Alright, so now we've got both of our studs that's going to, should be able to go up in here. And go back in there and hook. And then we can put our nuts on it. one all right so now what I mean is I probably need to put just a little flat piece of metal here and weld it to it so that this won't go past that so that they don't go that way but I don't think it's going to really move because <clears throat> now this here is just to tighten the stud up in that collar these nuts are what adjusts it. And it'll be just like that right there. So now we can adjust the blade with these two nuts. So now we got to loosen the other side up. Alright, then we're going to tighten these bolts up. Evenly. Until we get the belt as tight as we need it. All right, I think that'll work just fine right there. So then we can just tighten these nuts down. Tighten this down so it don't sit there and vibrate. And then we'll tighten these down over here. We got the proper amount of tension on it. We can always adjust later. It's running straight through in line with each other. And if I ever get another one of these link belts to put here, I've got some right there and a little piece that come off of this, but it's still, I don't think it's long enough to make two of them. So, anyway, so we've got the motor mount done. 
it's adjustable these here are 3 8 bolts with 9 16 heads on them and 9 16 heads fits right in that track because there's a keeper underneath there that keeps the bolt from turning so you just slide it down in there in the track on these two these two don't have that so that's why I made it like this so now I can adjust this belt anytime I want. Anytime I need to bring that belt in, loosen these nuts up all the way back, slide the motor, take the belt off, put it back on, slide it back, and tighten the nuts up. And I don't think we need to change this. We don't want to need to weld it. We just need to shape the end of it to match the contour of this. Because I don't think it's going to move. So... Once you, you only need these for tightening. Once you get these tight, you don't need it no more. So, got a lot going on. Got a lot of stuff going here. I got the mill I'm working on. And uh, still waiting on parts. I got my chain for it today. But I'm still not going to be able to put the DRO cords in the chain. To hide the cord because I'm not desoldering them plugs to put them in into the the uh, chain and then resolder them back on there. For my luck, I'd solder the wrong wire in the wrong place and fry all of it, and then I got five hundred and some dollars down the toilet. So, but anyway, I've never tried this dryer. I don't know anything about it. Uh, I got that last year, and I was going to put it right there, but I kind of liked that one better, so I ended up, I actually know what happened was, this guy, it took him a month to ship it to me, by the time I got tired of waiting on him to ship it, I bought that one, and then that one finally showed up, so I ended up with two of them, <laughs> so... Now, I had to change the uh, pop-off valve. Uh, the one they had in this was 135 pop-off. So that means that they only had this thing pumped to 125, but we're going to put 150 in it. Uh, I had to get another switch for it because the unloader valve on that one is messed up, and I, I'm just getting another valve and another switch and be done with it so <clears throat> now the next thing i have to do which will be in the next video i just want to show that motor mount and i did promise that i was going to show you the uh, the pulley that i had to make well i didn't really make the pulley i made i adapted that one on for that big motor and let me see if I can find my uh, light. So what I did here is this year pulley was for a one inch shaft. So I went and made a bushing that was the same size outside diameter as the inside diameter of this. The pulley. Then I reamed it out to a 5 8 then I went and uh, put a keyway in it broached the keyway in it and then I broached another keyway for this pulley so that this pulley would key to this bushing and then I had to offset it to put it in a different place to put another key for the internal so this bushing takes an outer key and an inner key and then I put a split in it, and as you can see, my split ain't right where I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be exactly where this split was, so that when I squeeze it, and it does the same thing, it's just not lined up with that one right there. So then when you tighten these screws up, or these set screws, it squeezes all this against that shaft. So that's how I modified that. And I hope this thing's going to be a nice compressor. I have my, I really have my doubts about that thing. 
that pump. So, I still haven't welded the base to it yet, and I'm working on this stand right here. Let me take you off the tripod. This is the stand that was welded to the top. And dumbass me went and cut it wrong. So now I gotta restart. I cut it a little too wide. And I took a, a pencil and ran it along this tank to make sure that that was the same contour, but it didn't work out like that. This ended up being wider. So basically what I'm gonna have to do to fix this problem is I'm gonna have to start right here somewhere and just kind of put a relief in there all the way to the center to relieve that down so we'll have to take some of this out right here in the bottom corner or middle so that this will come down and come flat to this then I can weld this to it then I'll put my brackets on the bottom of this to allow for my bearings. So that'll get it high enough off the ground. My pitcock landed right in that hole where it used to be the holes right here. So now that hole's down there on the pitcock to drain the water. And then we're gonna run that pitcock right out through here. So, let me get my light and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see, I cut that hole so that this flange will go down through it. And I think it's still a little off center, but I got to center it yet. But I'm not going to do that until I turn this upside down. Basically what I'm going to do is I've got to take this, the pump, and the motor all off at the same time. It has to all stay bolted together. That way I can turn it upside down and weld these nuts to this plate. That way these holes will be threaded. And... Well, I might not need to do anything over here to weld. So I might be able to get away with taking the motor off of it to lighten it up a little bit so I can maneuver this and get it down on the ground so I can weld them nuts on the bottom. I mean, if I was really going to go into this all the way, I could probably take and just cut some relief right here, kind of make it come up like this and over and then down. And then I could just reach up in there and put the nuts on it. But I don't like messing with them nuts underneath this thing. So I'm just going to weld them to this. That's the same as threading this metal. I probably could have threaded that metal. It's thick enough. So, uh, but that'll give it a more solid and stay tighter for longer. So in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and take everything down, weld the nuts, and weld that plate on top of it. Once we get the plate, I had y'all looking at my boobie. Y'all, quit that. Anyway, uh, that's what we're gonna do in the next video. So hopefully the next time we do this, uh, we can get the top mount mounted to it and welded. And then that part will be done. Then, once I get the top welded on it, then I can flip it upside down and it'll lay flat on the ground and then I can level and work with that a little bit better. It's hard to work on that when you have to keep raising it. I had to jack it up with the elbow there on the end to get it up to where I can get that underneath of it. And I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna wait until I get the uh, stand or the uh, platform welded to the tank, flip it over, 
then I can work with it a little better and then I can measure from the floor so I can make sure that that's square too. So uh, then we'll have to make mounts for it for these bearings because I'm going to put an axle on this end. This end I'm going to cut two of these feet off and put it on, on there and then cut the other one off and put it in the stockpile somewhere for something else. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with one foot. <laughs> but that's where we're at on this and uh, it won't be long we'll be able to operate this thing. I'm waiting on a switch and I can't believe I had everything to do that copper line. I had both of them fittings I didn't even know I had. Compression fittings and the compression ring and the compression nut. So and the the hose. Hell I didn't even I, I didn't even realize I had tubing. <laughs> so I could have replaced them other ones, but that's a bigger it takes a bigger line. But that'll work. There'll be the air going in, get through the tank, out that into the filter and the uh, oiler. And then after we weld it, then we got to tear it all back down and paint it. And I haven't even got the paint yet. So I hope y'all got something out of this with the adjustment screws and the, uh, the pulley, how to make things work when you don't want to buy another pulley. For some reason my hands are itching. But it's late. It's about 12.54 in the morning. So I'm going to head in the house, wash my hands, take a bath, and sit down and eat some ice cream, watch some Survivor, and uh, just got finished watching Keith Rucker, so he's getting ready to pour some Babbitt bearings. Anyway, you guys have a good one. Later.